Uh, that should be fine. Um, for, but that's for the next thing. That's after so yeah, so it can come out, still stay off stage. Yeah. Right here? John, where, okay. where are your guys here? Uh, we're over there. Uh, let me take this over there. May I have your attention, everyone? May I have your attention? At this time, we'd kindly like to ask that all graduates process to the floor of Conti Forum. So all graduates, please process to the floor and take a seat on the floor here at Conti Forum. Thank you so very, very much. Our ceremony will begin shortly. We'd ask that you please take your seats. Members of the class of 2020, please take your seats so that our ceremony can begin. Again, graduates, members of the class of 2020, please take your seats so that our ceremony can begin. Thank you.
dear members of the class of 2020, once again, we ask you to please come to the floor of Conti Forum and take a seat. We're about to begin the main degree ceremony. Class of 2020, once again, we ask you to come to the floor of Conti Forum and take a seat as we're getting ready to start the main degree ceremony. Thank you so much. Class of 2020, one brief announcement. If you were not on the floor for the baccalaureate mass, you're just arriving right now, we ask that you take a seat that's available in the stands just to make sure that we have enough seats for everyone. So if you're just arriving now and you're a class of 2020 graduate and we're not here for baccalaureate mass, we ask you to take a seat in the stands, not to take a seat away from one of your classmates and peers. Thank you so much.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for our national anthem, the University Chorale, under the direction of John Finney, will sing the national anthem. Please be seated. William P. Leahy of the Society of Jesus, President of Boston College, will now offer his welcoming remarks. We gather this morning to celebrate the graduation of the Boston College of 2020, an especially happy occasion for members of this class as, and as well as their parents, family, guests, and friends. Also with us today are the chair of the Boston College Board of Trustees, Mr. John Fish, trustee and trustee associates, faculty, administrators, and staff. On behalf of the entire university community, I welcome all in Conti Forum and those participating via live streaming to this celebration. Your presence is a powerful sign of interest and engagement, not only in regard to the graduates of 2020, but also in the life of Boston College. Much has happened since BC and other schools suspended classes in March 2020 because of COVID-19. As we know, the months since then have had their share of disruption and heartache, but our world and Boston College have persevered. Today, we come together to acknowledge the 2020 graduates of Boston College and give thanks for their many accomplishments and achievements during their years at the Heights. No question, these class members brought new life to Boston College with their talents, energy, and generosity. This celebration also reminds how much our graduates have received and continue to receive from parents, family, and friends. People whose steadfast support and encouragement have had such decisive impact and will continue to do so. And so to express our appreciation, may I ask 
that family and friends of those who are here today celebrating their graduation, please stand and allow all of us to express our thanks with a round of applause. We also recall with great gratitude Boston College faculty and staff for their roles in helping members of the class of 2020 develop their intellectual gifts and personal talents, grow in self-knowledge, and commit themselves to living lives of meaning and purpose. Finally, we are thankful for the Boston College alumni friends and benefactors whose generous gifts of time, advice, and financial resources made it possible for many to be part of this celebration today. Our ceremony particularly encourages our graduates to consider moments and people that so shaped their lives while they were at Boston College and to give thanks for them. Those in the class of 2020 take with them memories that will be part of their lives forever. Memories of the beginnings and flowering of friendships. Experiences on campus, whether in class, residence halls, retreats. Times when a faculty member, administrator, or staff person had a transformative effect on intellectual development or personal growth. And then I think this ceremony invites our graduates to reflect about their lives, interests, and activities since March 2020, and more so about their future aspirations, plans, and goals. Jesuit education and spirituality stress the importance of reflection, action, and honest personal conversations with others. Doing so helps us grow in maturity, sense of God in our lives, and awareness of current realities and opportunities. Our world very much needs you graduates of the class of 2020. We need you to help resolve challenges and bring more hope to our day. I believe that you are already doing that. And I urge that you leave this weekend more deeply committed to sharing with others the benefits you have received from your Boston College education. One emphasizing the liberal arts, and provided in an atmosphere of care and faith shaped by the Jesuit Catholic intellectual and religious heritage. May you always strive to be beacons of light for those around you, much as the Tower of Gasson Hall does on our campus. And may God continue to bless you and your families. Thank you. The class of 2020 degrees were conferred on Monday, May 18th, 2020. I will now read the Latin version of the degree. Coratores Collegi Bostoniensis, omnibus presentes literas visurus, salutem in domino. Ishe literis nos ad id muneris Summa Republicae Massachusetts, Autoritate Delegati, Testamur Delectos Nobis Rite Probatos, 
ad artium, scientiae, educationes, legum, re socialis, philosophiae, theologiae, gradus fuisse provectos, et omnibus et singulis juribus et privilegis ad istos gradus, pertinentibus eos ad nobis fuisse donatus. Quod ut omnibus inotescat, presentas literas, communi nostro sigillo, et presidis huius collegi chirographo munitas dedimus in aula nostra academica, die decimo octavo, mense maio, anno domini bis millesimo vicesimo. Steve Pemberton's life serves as a powerful example of what hope, humility, and tenacity can help us achieve. A caretaker once wrote that he didn't have a chance in the world. But through hard work and strong will, he triumphed over adversity to become a philanthropist, senior level executive for Monster.com, Walgreens Boots Alliance, and currently chief people officer for Work Human. He is also a best-selling author, husband, and father of three. In September 2016, you, the members of the class of 2020, welcome Steve back to campus to discuss his critically acclaimed memoir, A Chance in the World, which became a film and a movement that he co-founded. Steve Pemberton, proud member of the class of 1989 and recipient of an honorary doctorate from Boston College in 2015, will now address the graduates of the class of 2020. Thank you. A battleship was at exercise in dark and stormy weather. Uh, the proud captain, neatly attired, chest adorned with medals, feet spread apart, was standing on the bridge issuing commands and surveying the performance of his team. The lookout, whose job it was to be aware of difficulty, suddenly spots a light from another ship on the starboard side. And he informs the captain of the presence of the ship, to which the captain asks, is the ship steady or is it moving? Steady, comes the reply. The captain, keenly aware that the two ships are now headed towards each other, ordered the lookout to signal to the other ship, change course 20 degrees. We are on a collision course. The signal from the other ship comes back, no. It is advisable for you to change course 20 degrees. The captain sends back another message. I am a captain in the United States Navy and have commanded this nation's finest battleships over the course of 30 years, and so it is advisable for you to change course 20 degrees. Back comes a response from the other ship. I am an eagle of Boston College, class of 2020, keeper of the Ignatian flame, and I respect your service, but you are the one who must change course 20 degrees. And the captain is now furious and drops any pretense of politeness. And he says, I am a 50,000 ton battleship and you will not survive a collision with this vessel. For the last time change course. Silence fills the air and back comes a message from the eagle. I am a lighthouse, it's your decision.
Now, in the interest of full disclosure, that story did not actually happen. Uh, you know, that, that joke has actually been around for, for quite some time, but I, I am quite confident that I am the very first one uh, to make that lighthouse keeper a Boston College graduate. And why I did so, well, we're going to get to that in a moment. So good morning, family. Thank you very much, Father Leahy, uh, Chairman Fish, Father Keenan, fellow members of the Board of Trustees, members of the faculty and staff, and honored guests, and distinguished alumni. Thank you for your presence today as we come to celebrate uh, this extraordinary class of 2020 and their families who have traveled from all over the world and join us from all over the world uh, to be part of what has been a very long awaited day. You know, the truth of it is that the work of this university over the last year and a half was never really going to be fully complete until this class of 2020 was reconvened. There has been a gap in our memory of this class until we saw you again and until you saw each other again, although I'm proud to report that you look just as beautiful as you did in March of 2020. It really has been quite an honor for me to have formed such a wonderful relationship with you over the years, to have watched your trajectory during your time at the Heights, uh, to see your successes both here and beyond. And from the time that I had the wonderful privilege to be your convocation speaker, uh, I have come to call many of you my friend. And I uh, have been honored to have been considered by you a friend in return. And it occurs to me that probably the only thing that I could do to harm that friendship is by going on too long with my commencement remarks. Uh, you know, wisdom is a gift, but so is brevity. And I promise to err on the side of the latter today so that you can continue on with the celebration or given some of the festivities I was w watching yesterday, perhaps it might be more like a recovery. <laughs> but you are back home. The traditional role of the commencement speaker is to offer words of counsel and advice, but you know the truth of it is that this is not a, a traditional uh, commencement, and besides, I'm not entirely convinced that this is really the time for that. The fact of the matter is that you've been out in the world for some time now, and that world is a lot different than the one that you thought that you might enter. A global pandemic, an economic meltdown, a polarizing political culture with three convergent storms that none of us could have anticipated. And while this has been challenging for all of us, it has been especially challenging for you because the world that you entered changed so dramatically just as you were stepping into it. So it has indeed required you to be resilient, to stand strong, to have faith, and to still serve in despite all of the extraordinary circumstances. So no, my friends, uh, a class that has demonstrated all the noble qualities of the lighthouse uh, does not necessarily need to hear the words of advice, well intended though uh, they may be. But I will make a small humble request of you shortly. Many of you quietly wondered in your sudden departure from this campus in March of 2020 whether or not this was the end of your time at this university. You, this cannot be how it ends, you might have thought. But I want to assure you that it was not going to end that way. It was never going to end that way. And it's not just because we were determined and resolved that we would have this day for you and your family and loved ones. It's because the Boston College experience is never really measured by a specific time or place, but over the span of a lifetime, because that is how long it takes to realize just how treasured your time here really was, that you developed friendships here that you could have never found anywhere else. And they will be your anchor, your compass, your guide for the rest of your life. You will be in each other's weddings. You will be godparents to one another's children. You'll take on some great entrepreneurial risk together. You'll celebrate one another's successes and stand shoulder to shoulder in times of uncertainty. And as time and as life moves on, I suspect you'll see that your time at Boston College really 
was only just the beginning. You know, if you study lighthouses, as I have come to, you are called the Pharologist. It is an acknowledgment of the first attested lighthouse constructed on the Greek island of Pharos. So I can tell you as a quasi forologist that as a practical matter, the lighthouse really is no longer necessary. Technology has rendered these architectural marvels nearly obsolete, and yet still they endure. The reason for this, as near as I can tell, is that the lighthouse, the savior of the sea, exists now not to help us navigate the sea, but to help us navigate humanity to show us and provide to us a perpetual reminder of how we ought to be with one another and how we ought to be to one another. Lighthouses are perhaps the most selfless structure that humankind has ever created. It serves no purpose other than to be of service to another, to simply be a beacon in times of uncertainty and chaos. It is faithful, steadfast, humble, resilient. It seeks neither reward nor recognition. It is not concerned about one's race, gender, or faith expression. It neither qualifies your distress nor renders judgment on your uncertainty. Nor does it care about your title, where you stand on a specific social issue, or who you voted for in the last election. The Lighthouse is only concerned about protecting your journey, and in doing so, sees our common humanity. And you, class of 2020, really have been the embodiment of the Lighthouse. Even now, as we continue to try to find safe harbor, you continue to remind us of the lessons of the Lighthouse. We all have been reminded through your example of the importance of family and friendship and common humanity that really does connect us. We better understand that God's greatest gifts to us, whether that be the miracle that is life, the sanctuary that is this planet, or the national treasure that is democracy, is only as strong as our willingness to protect and defend it. That, too, is an epiphany. You've reminded us that the seemingly everyday, ordinary people, those who have stood on the front lines of a pandemic, like our friends and colleagues in the School of Nursing, those are the most authentic heroes in the world today. And you've reminded us that each day and each interaction provides us an opportunity to be a lighthouse to another and to find one for ourselves. For as the Irish proverb reminds us, it is in the shelter of each other that the people live. During this pandemic, I lost a kind and gracious man in John Sykes who once provided me shelter when I was just a young boy. And there is not a time I step on this campus that I am not reminded of the day John dropped me off on the Newton campus to begin my college career. Several weeks ago, we also lost my mother-in-law, Shirley Bush, who provided my wife, Tanya, shelter and protection. Both of them were human lighthouses for us, and because they were, Tanya and I have come to call Boston College our home. And now, it is the same for our son, Quinn. I suspect some of your own lighthouses have joined you here today. Lighthouses, indeed, are all around us and in this very place. Phyllis Dunn comes here today to see her grandson, John Dunn, graduate. Aunt Andrea from Texas and Grandma Beattie from Chicago have joined us to see Michael Osage walk across the stage. Hina Nisarelli, whose family is actually watching this commencement on live stream from Madagascar, is also a lighthouse. I spoke with her just a few minutes ago, and she said that her family could not travel here. So she, a nurse, has been joined by a client, affirming for us that family is not just what you're born into, 
It's also who you find along the way. It is said that your commencement speaker is your last college professor and that this address is actually your last lecture. And if indeed that is the case, uh, then I do have a final assignment for you. You have to let the lighthouses in your life know just how important they are to you. Write to them, call them, text them, and if they are no longer with us, say a silent prayer of gratitude to them. And your assignment is indeed due today because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. There are nearly 23,000 lighthouses standing in the world today, but on Monday, May 18th of 2020, we converged 2,332 more because the most powerful lighthouses in the world have always, always been the human ones, which leads me to my final request of you. Let your life be a lighthouse. Let your life be a lighthouse for this university that will always treasure you. Let your life be a lighthouse for the community that raised you and celebrates you. Let your life be a lighthouse for a world that does indeed summon you. Let your life be a lighthouse for your family that loves you in small ways and in big ways. But on every day, let your life be a lighthouse. Thank you, Boston College Class of 2020. And may God continue to bless you in all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The University Chorale will perform Tolite Ostias, composed by Camille Sansen. Tolite Ostias is the final movement of the Christmas Oratorio by Sansen. Today, it is sung by the underclassmen of the Chorale as an offering of love and support for all the members of the class of 2020.
There now follows the affirmation of the conferral of degrees awarded on May 18th, 2020, which will be presented in the order of the founding of the schools. David Quigley, Provost and Dean of Faculties, will present the undergraduate members of the class of 2020 to the President for the affirmation of the conferral of those degrees from May 18th, 2020. As Provost and Dean of Faculties, it is my privilege to welcome you back home and to present you to the President as graduates of the extraordinary Boston College Class of 2020. In celebration of your achievements and your special place in this university's storied history, we are proud to present you today with a special commemoration of the ceremony, one that connects your class to the long tradition of Jesuit education. In 1541, when Francis Xavier departed Portugal for India, his fellow Spaniard and close friend, Ignatius of Loyola, urged him to go set the world aflame. Today, we give to each of you an Ignatian coin cast specifically for the Boston College class of 2020. May this coin, along with your diploma, serve as a lasting reminder of your years here at Boston College. You will each receive your coin at this afternoon's school ceremonies. At this time, I would now like to invite to the stage the representatives of each of the five undergraduate schools who will receive the Ignatian coin on behalf of their classmates, from Chair of the Boston College Board of Trustees, John Fish, as I present each school's class to Father Leahy. May I now ask the graduates who received the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Sciences from the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences on May 18, 2020, to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the Dean and the Morrissey College faculty, I am honored to present these graduates who have completed all requirements for graduation, and I hereby affirm that they earned the degree of Bachelor of Arts and or Bachelor of Sciences on May 18, 2020. Receiving the Ignatian coin on behalf of her classmates is Chantel Sanchez. Congratulations to all of today's graduates of the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. Please be seated. May I now ask the graduates who received the degree of Bachelor of Arts from the James A. Woods of the Society of Jesus College of Advancing Studies on May 18, 2020 to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the Dean and the Woods College faculty, I am honored to present these graduates who have completed all requirements for graduation, and I hereby affirm that they earned the degree of Bachelor of Arts on May 18, 2020. Receiving the Ignatian coin on behalf of her classmates is Shan Shan Li. Congratulations to all of today's graduates of the Woods College of Advancing Studies. May I now ask the graduates who received the degrees of Bachelor of Science from the Wallace E. Carroll School of Management on May 18, 2020, to please rise. Applause 
Father President, on behalf of the Dean and the Carroll School faculty, I am honored to present these graduates who have completed all requirements for graduation, and I hereby affirm that they earned the degree of Bachelor of Science on May 18, 2020. Receiving the Ignatian coin on behalf of her classmates is Alyssa Casal. Congratulations to all of today's graduates of the Carroll School of Management. May I now ask the graduates who received the degree of Bachelor of Science from the William F. Connell School of Nursing on May 18, 2020 to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the Dean and the Connell School faculty, I am honored to present these graduates who have completed all requirements for graduation, and I hereby affirm that they earned the degree of Bachelor of Science on May 18, 2020. Re receiving the Ignatian coin on behalf of her classmates is Hini, Hina Nisarali. Congratulations to all of today's graduates of the Cannell School of Nursing. May I now ask the graduates who received the degree of Bachelor of Arts from the Carolyn A. and Peter S. Lynch School of Education and Human Development on May 18, 2020 to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the Dean and the Lynch School faculty, I am honored to present these graduates who have completed all requirements for graduation, and I hereby affirm that they earned the degree of Bachelor of Arts on May 18, 2020. Receiving the Ignatian coin on behalf of her classmates is Sarah Stottlemyre, the, the 2020 Edward H. Finnegan of the Society of Jesus Award recipient. Congratulations to all of today's graduates of the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. As president of Austin College, and in accordance with the authority granted to me by the trustees of Austin College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I affirm the degrees of those presented to me, and I congratulate them and for their achievements and for all the ways in which they contributed to Boston College while students and what they will do as alumni. My congratulations to each of the grads of the class of 2020. I will now read to you the citation for the Ignatian coin that each member of the class of 2020 will receive at the individual school ceremonies that will follow this commencement celebration. The citation reads, in 1541, as Francis Xavier departed for India to spread the gospel, his close friend, Ignatius Loyola encouraged him to go 
set the world aflame. Later, in 1546, Francis Xavier wrote a letter to Ignatius and his fellow Jesuits, quote, so that I may never forget you and ever have a special remembrance of you. For my own consolation, I have cut your names from the letters which you have written to me with your own hands so that I may constantly carry them with me. I give thanks, first of all, to God our Lord, and then to you for the fact that God has so made you that I derive such great consolation from bearing your names. Like those Jesuit, early Jesuit companions, you, the members of the Boston College class of 2020, are friends in the Lord. The COVID-19 global pandemic required your abrupt departure from Chestnut Hill in March 2020. Today, on October 17th, 2021, we reconvene to celebrate your graduation from Boston College. Receive this coin as a sign of your closeness to one another and to Boston College. May it serve as a special remembrance and encouragement for you to constantly carry one another as Francis remembered his friends as he went to set the world aflame. May each member of the class of 2020 go and do likewise. Go, set the world aflame. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to please rise for the final blessing that will be offered. By William P. Leahy of the Society of Jesus, University President, and remain standing for the singing of the alma mater along with the university chorale. Let us pray. We pause to pray to you, God, our Father, in a special way for the graduates of the Boston College of 2020, those present at this ceremony and those participating remotely. We pray in gratitude for the zeal, wisdom, and gifts you have bestowed on them and also for the many ways they shared their talents and insights with others during their time at the Heights. We seek your continued blessings on them, their families, and friends. Please give the class of 2020 great desires and courage so that they can contribute even more to the greater good and to the task of building up your kingdom in the world around us. May they be people who bear in mind words in scripture, pray and not lose heart, to do justice, love goodness, and walk humbly with you, our God. We ask that you continue to bless Boston College and enable it and its community 
to keep striving to work for your greater honor and glory. We present these prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all taking part in this ceremony and those participating via live stream. Blessed may you be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This concludes the Class of 2020 University Commencement Celebration. The school and college ceremonies will begin in approximately 30 minutes. The locations of the various school ceremonies are listed in the Class of 2020 Commencement Program. And finally, May I ask that you please remain standing until the dignitaries at the platform, the Board of Trustees and Trustee Associates, <coughs> Vice Presidents and Senior Administrators, the Deans and members of the faculty have left Conti Forum. All graduates and guests of the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, please remain here in your places. Charles Gallagher of the Society of Jesus will direct you next from this podium. We ask that 
We ask that the guests of the graduates of the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences remain seated so that we may facilitate other guests leaving Conti Forum in a safe and distanced manner. All other guests may leave Conti Forum at the conclusion of my remarks. The main ceremony will close with one last rousing rendition of our traditional Sweet Caroline. At, at the conclusion of Sweet Caroline, the graduates may depart for their school ceremonies. We ask that the undergraduates of the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences remain on the floor and return to their seats by 12 noon for their school ceremony. Those uh, Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences graduates seated in the stands during the main ceremony please make your way down to the floor by that time for your school ceremony. Guests may now leave the Conti Forum. Thank you. Where it began I can't begin to know it, but then I know it's growing strong. Wasn't the spring, and spring became the summer. Who'd have believed you'd come along? Hey. Touching hands Reaching out Touching me Touching you Fill it up with only two And when I hurt Hurting runs off my shoulders How can I hurt when holding you? Warm Touching warm 